Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. My cousin lied about me and said terrible things. I found out about it and now the whole family knows. The second story. Manager came up with a new tactic to attract customers. His plan failed and they lost a valuable employee. The third story. Old boss wanted me to send him the documents by registered mail. Now he has 200 pages of printed materials. Today's first story is, My cousin thought she was being so clever. It did not work out for her. So here's a malicious compliance story that made my family laugh for years and still does. A good few years back, I was about 24 to 25 years old. I went to Cyprus with my grandparents to visit relatives. My grandparents originally came from there and moved to the UK when they were like 16. My cousin, 14 female, also came along. Now it's important to mention that we're Greek Cypriots. Certain things are expected when we visit relatives, such as helping out with things if we can and offering our help for whatever our host might be doing. It's also worth mentioning that I have a sight problem, but I'm extremely independent in spite of it. So we were visiting relatives and every time I offered to help out, either taking dishes into the kitchen, bringing them out of the kitchen, Washing up, even getting a glass of water, I kept being told to sit down. They could handle it. I didn't understand why as I'm perfectly capable. I thought it might be to do with my eyes. One day we were visiting a great auntie of ours who owns a little summer home by the sea, not too far from where we were staying. Now when we visit this auntie I always go swimming. She's literally not even a couple of minutes away from the sea. Now as I went to offer my help to my great aunt, I hear my 14 year old cousin talking to her in Greek. Another important note, I can't string together a sentence in Greek. My father is English and had something against us speaking Greek. But although I'm not a fluent speaker, I can read, write, and understand Greek. My family doesn't know this. They assume that because I'm not a fluent speaker, that they can basically hide their conversations between other people. My cousin was telling my great aunt how clumsy I am, how stupid I am, how I'm a little soft in the head. She was saying it in Greek. She thought I couldn't understand her, but I knew exactly what she was saying even if I couldn't string sentences together myself, I knew what she was saying about me. I added two and two together and realized my cousin was very obviously telling all my relatives this. She did it because she thought she'd get praised if she helped bring out the food without me. I was angry, but I knew the perfect revenge. We ate lunch and after we were finished eating, my great aunt asked my cousin for her help to take the dishes in and do the washing up as she'd been on her feet most of the morning preparing the food. My cousin looked at me knowing my great aunt couldn't speak English and said, Hey OP, auntie needs help taking the plates in and doing the washing up. Because now she was bored and expected to run off to the beach and leave me doing the hard work of cleaning up after. So I looked at her and said, But I'm too stupid and clumsy and soft in the head to help auntie out. Besides, she asked for your help, not mine. She went pale, realizing I knew what she'd said. But she doubled down. I helped bring everything out. You could help take it all in. I laughed at her, picked up the book I brought with me and got up from the table, grabbed the towel I brought with me and went to walk off. My cousin started whining to my grandparents that I wasn't helping her. My grandmother looked at her and said, you made your bed, now you lie in it. Your cousin caught you lying about her and now she can go to the beach while you help your aunt. My cousin went completely white then. So I went to the beach, swam for 30 minutes, then chilled out on a deck chair reading my book under the shade of a nice umbrella. By the time my grandparents called to me that we were heading home, my cousin had spent all of it helping to wash up and drive things and put them away. She hadn't gotten to be lazy and go to the beach, to enjoy the sea. I could have helped her. I simply decided that I wouldn't, as she never earned my help. Since then, every time we went to a relative's home and she was asked to help, I watched with a smirk on my face. To this day, I'm 37 this year, I still won't help her. She made out I was incapable to people, so now she suffers the consequences. It's the malicious compliance that keeps on giving to me. Answers to some common questions. 1. I was born with congenital cataracts and I'm 85% blind. 2. This didn't actually start out as something to carry on for years. I don't actually carry it on myself either. It started out as a consequences for her actions type lesson. The family picked it up because she wouldn't admit to the lie, and no one liked her lying. They don't actually make her do extra chores when I'm not there, as the whole thing started because she said I was incapable. So the family basically told her she had to help out her incapable cousin. 3. The family carried it on until this point, because she refuses to admit to the lie. To this day, over a decade later, she still says that I'm incapable, clumsy, soft in the head, to any relatives that will listen. She's now a full-grown adult, 
who refuses to let go of the lie, so the family has kept up her narrative because she won't let it go. 4. Some people have asked if my grandmother knew what was going on before I confronted my cousin. She did not. After I caught her lying about me and used her words against her, my grandmother straight away asked my great aunt in front of us both if my cousin had said that. My great aunt confirmed it, as she didn't know my cousin was actually lying. I had already put two and two together and realized this was probably what my cousin had been doing with everyone we visited. My grandmother was one of ten siblings that made it to adulthood, and my grandmother was one of six siblings that made it to adulthood. We visited a lot of relatives. So, once my grandmother found out my cousin had done this at my great aunt's, my grandmother dug around and found out what I'd already guessed. When my grandmother asked exactly why she thought that it was okay to do this, she doubled down and basically claimed it was true. So my grandmother told our relatives that this was absolutely not true. She also told them that as my cousin refused to admit to the lie, that they should treat her as the only capable one when I was there. If she wants to lie about her family, my grandmother asked they act towards her, as if the lie were true. If I was incapable, then I couldn't possibly help out, but my cousin was not incapable. She'd be required to do the stuff they'd normally ask of me. Please don't get me wrong. She wasn't asked to do anything OTT, like cleaning hunted kills, paving driveways, or herding cattle. She was asked to wash dishes, carry dishes in and out of the kitchen, drying and putting away clean dishes. Simple things asked of anyone. They just made a point of only asking her when I was there, because of her refusal to admit to the lie. She's 24 to 25 years old now, with her own place, but she still goes around telling people the same lie about me. My grandparents didn't know about it until I confronted her with it. They just made a reactionary choice when they found out what she was doing. The next story is... Start using icebreakers to talk to customers to get them to buy stuff? You got it. The story is over a decade old, back when I was fresh out of college and dedicated to doing nothing important for as long as possible. I worked for an electronics store, a big one, and I lasted there for about 18 months before I realized I was wasting my time on garbage pay, that I ended up blowing on games and movies. My manager, Bob, but not really, was a pretty decent guy, and I never had too many complaints about him. Although he wasted that particular store because he was a pretty good manager, I could tell he was getting a lot of flack from the GM. Jim, but not really, because home theater, me, sales were stagnant. Clarification, good but not growing. And not hitting our ridiculous quotas. I worked in the mornings until afternoons, when there were maybe 10 people, visiting the department in total. And you could tell that eight of them were just watching TV waiting for their spouse's cell phone plan to be activated. Unfortunately, since there was so little foot traffic, Management's decision was to drill into us how to use every single marketing customer manipulation tactic to encourage people to buy things. I was a good salesperson and I could sell the SH out of home theater using tactics such as getting customers to use their imagination about their options, or presenting new options in ways they hadn't considered. I listened, I learned about their needs and what they were looking for, and they frequently left the store with something completely different than what they thought they needed. I recall that the number of returns I had was so small that I could probably count them on both hands over 18 months. I, however, was completely effing disinterested in marketing tactics, sales tactics, or manipulating customers for upsales. This meant upselling, or changing how I communicated with them to speak their language in a way that marketing showed increased sales, but was blatantly manipulative. F that. So when Jim tells Bob about their new push to encourage customers to buy things they normally wouldn't buy, he knows I'm going to be a challenge but he does a pretty good job at trying to convince me. He comes to me and we have a floor meeting and he asks me to try breaking the ice with the customers by chatting them up a little about topics unrelated to their viewing habits, home theater, etc., to get them to like me enough to want to make a purchase. MC time. I was ready to quit and move on and I was no longer interested in playing the game. He wanted me to try breaking the ice with people, so I started flirting with all the customers. Black, white, guy, girl, rich, not rich, old, not old. Everyone got a smile and a compliment about their outfit, and I'd compare them to a celebrity they reminded me of if possible. I was good at it too. I kept it completely mild and inoffensive. Our uniforms were blah, and I wasn't really trying, but on more than one occasion a bored older woman or housewife gave me their phone number. Our overall numbers started going down because I was busy chatting with customers and making sales, so eventually I got hit with a secret shopper and the jig was up. Bob finds out about this from Jim and I can hear him laughing from across the store before coming my department to ask me to go to the back of the store for a private meeting. He wrote me up for inappropriate communications with customers. I told him I wouldn't sign the write-up report because I received no directives saying I couldn't flirt with customers. I wasn't violating the employee handbook. I made sure, and I never said anything that was offensive or sexual, even though several customers took it in that direction. But more importantly, I was giving my two weeks notice, 
but if the write-up was a deal breaker, I could leave now. Bob was sad that I was leaving, but understood. Jim was peeved that I was leaving because I was a good earner, even though the department goals were ridiculous. I was an acerbic jack A. The last story is, you only want certified mail? Okay. I once worked for a company that provides therapy to children. The company owner was not licensed or credentialed to do this, but I am, so he hired me. I got hired, did my job, supervised the other workers, kept all files electronically, and kept the data up to date. Everything was HIPAA compliant. As time passed, I found out he was committing insurance fraud. I knew I wanted to report him and quit. However, due to the type of therapy I do, I didn't want to leave the clients without therapy. They didn't do anything wrong. I decided to give my boss four weeks notice so he could hire someone else and I could transfer care properly. My boss didn't like this plan or the fact that I wanted to quit, so he terminated me on the spot. I thought this was reckless of him seeing that now he had no one on his staff who could legally supervise the therapy and sign off on clinical notes. I was the only one who could. When he fired me, he started slandering my name and telling lies about me. I work in a small area where everyone in my field knows of everyone else in the field, and I wasn't about to have my reputation tarnished due to his illnesses. I hired an attorney to write a cease and desist letter. It was sent to him certified mail. He didn't like this either. He reached out to me and said the company needed all their materials back as well as client data. He said he would only accept it in certified mail. Of course, I wanted to send the books and materials I had back to him as well as transfer the data to him. But it didn't make sense to send hard copies of the data. It would be a lot easier to securely email the graph data I had. It would also make it easier on whomever took over my caseload, as the data system and graphs would already be set up for them. I tried to explain this in my email reply, but he wasn't having it. He replied, I will no longer reply to you. I told you to send all materials in certified mail, and that's what I expect to happen. Q malicious compliance. I printed all the raw data and graphs I had. This ended up being about 200 pages worth of information. When it printed, it looked all wonky and extremely difficult to read across that many pages. As I was packing the books, materials, and 200 pages of printed data into the box to be sent, I accidentally dropped it and the papers scattered everywhere. I picked them up, but they were all out of order, and impossible to tell how to put them back in order, so I just boxed everything up out of order and sent it to him certified mail with signature. I know he received the package. I don't know what he had the person he hired after me do because what was sent to him was unusable. Hard to read prints of the data. The only thing that I think could have been done was to have the new person recreate the entire system, decipher the order of the 200 pages of data, and input it manually. This would take many months. Maybe next time he won't be such a D, and he'll listen when his employee says it doesn't make sense to send hard copies of the data. Edit. I did report him to insurance fraud investigators. From what I've gathered after the fact, his old company no longer exists. A few years later, he opened a new company. I don't know what he was doing for the three to four years in between, and I don't know how his runs his new company now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Have a nice day.